And here we are going directly into game one of this Group E action. We have Phoenix in the top right position, spawning as the Blue Terran. And in the bottom left position, we have Adele Scott spawning as the Red Protoss. We have seen Shakuras Plateau pop up a surprising amount of times in this tournament, but because the distances are always cross-map, I think good players like the opportunity to have the game extend into the later stages. Yeah, and I think that's probably what we're going to see. Uh, we are going to see the probe down, moving up, not actually putting the pylon next to the nexus. We have seen that a couple of times, opting to put it a bit further down. We are going to see the gateway nearer to the ramp in this on instance. And um, that kind of, I guess you're going to see the gateway being put down there along with the uh, cybernetics core. Mm -hmm. Don't know whether he'll decide to go for a very gas heavy build or whether he'll try to go for a couple of gateways into an expo. That's probably the best build for Protoss on this map. So it looks like Phoenix is throwing down a supply depot in his main. Phoenix does love attacking all game long. Is so aggressive with Marines, Marauders, everything. Uh, looks like even aggressive with pausing the game. Really taking control, even in the Observer's eyes. I know. And the thing with the Observatory in StarCraft 2, we can't actually do anything on the screen. We're locked out now. <laughs> Just staring at his Terran base. SCVs powering their way to minerals. So while we're in this break, and just making sure that Phoenix has everything properly set up, looks like he just had a sound issue with his headphones. Mm. And it's important to make sure not only you can hear the game sounds, but you can't hear us saying everything here in the Dream Arena. Now, I do think that Phoenix is going to have a little bit of difficulty on this map just because his general style favors so much attacking. And mm. with those huge distances and those easy-to-manage ramps, Adele Scott will be in a very easy defensive position. Yeah, especially being not only next to each other on the other side of the map, they're actually cross maps too, so it's a long good way to... Because if you are the other side of the map but right next to each other, you can use Banshees and, and play like that to be very aggressive, but they're not going to be really used too much on this map. Though we have to see, it looks like he is getting ready to go now. Admins are just checking out his sound. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's an issue. You can't have that in such a large prize pool tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... <laughs> And you know, it's kind of one of those funny things, because I think everyone has their goofy little quirks when they're at home playing. Like for me, I always have to play with shoes on. I can't focus really well really? with that. I'm like the complete opposite. When I, when I used to play in tournaments, I used to take my shoes off. Really? Yeah, I used to sit there and take my shoes off. It was just more comfortable. Just stroll up in slippers, just take <laughs> them off in your pajamas, feeling yeah. just really at home. I mean, the one thing to note, though, is that with the sound settings, a very important aspect of tournament play is just the ambient sound, because when you're at home, you're used to the noises in your house, or mm. for the most part, the silence in your house as you're just sort of playing in that comfort. But here on the big stage, it's kind of disconcerting when you realize that you're going to hear the roar of the crowd if anything intense ends up happening. There's actually been a couple of players I've seen in tournaments who have actually played with iPod on, with the iPod on, just like listening to music. I think Pain News was one uh, in the MLG he recently oh, yeah, played. Yeah. actually played with music playing because that's how he was used to playing at home, mm -hmm, always mm -hmm. listening to music. Uh, and then that's how he played in MLG. Uh, yeah, so definitely. I now, think, I for any of you who are unfamiliar with Phoenix, he's been performing extremely well in a lot of the major tournaments, most notably the Intel Extreme Masters Tournament up in Comic-Con in New York City, just trumped a lot of extraordinarily good players. So, I mean, really, really always exciting to watch him play and has really pushed the front of Terran versus Terran with how aggressive he is with that sort of uh, positioning. Yeah, and he notably just come off, um, I think he was playing in the uh, Southern American Blizzard tournament and came second, losing against Killer, though Killer's a very good Zerg player. Mm -hmm. Coming second at that kind of large tournament is also a great feat and a great achievement, so he's not going to be at all any kind of walkover. Very experienced player, uh -huh. playing very well. Most players are actually scared of him being such a scary Terran player. And yeah, if yeah. you look at the group, it's actually an incredible group. Demuslin, yeah. Phoenix, Adele Scott, and Murs. I would probably call that the group of death in this tournament. I mean, all those players are so good. And a lot of the other, um, in a lot of the other brackets, it was kind of an easy pick for the top two. I think the, the only real upset we've seen thus far is Action Jesus. Action Jesus. Action Jesus. Action Jesus. Who, of course, is the new, is the new fan favorite. Six pulling his way to salvation, as they I, say. He's going to pull a silent control, get to the quarterfinals of the tournament by winning games in under two minutes every time. But, you know, we, we haven't gotten the chance to talk too much about Adele Scott, who I think is an absolutely phenomenal player who doesn't get enough credit. And, you know, in the European scene, there's so many big names that even you know, the A-class players 
don't get mentioned because there's so many S-class level players in Europe. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, he doesn't actually come in week in, week out to win tournaments, but he does take games away from mm -hmm. big players. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I've been speaking to people across the weekend, and they do say, I'm like, so, what do you think about Adele Scott? You think he's a good player? Is he not? And they tell me, well, he doesn't win tournaments, but he can take you out. He actually can yeah, easily yeah. take you out of any tournament. And he has notable wins against a lot of good players throughout different tournaments. So he's not going to be any walkover at all for any of these players here. And what I love so much about his style is that it's very much his own. A lot of times players will see essentially one or two builds from maybe some top pros and say, I guess I'm just doing that. Mm. And then they just try to work it again and again and again. But even since day one of the beta, Adele Scott was doing this big mass gateway style with lots of zealots and stalkers, throwing off a lot of players. The only issue with that kind of style is generally there are some issues with stability. Without having replays to get a sense of what other people are doing, it's hard for you to know if you're being right or wrong. But Adele Scott clearly over time has become more and more comfortable. And honestly, he's one of my favorite Protoss players to steal strategies from. And it looks like we we're actually rehosting the game. It seems that Phoenix had a technical issue on his computer. Yeah, both players are ready to get into the game now. I'm um, just okay. waiting for him to come on. Um, I haven't got Adele Scott actually. No, I do. Here he is. So we're just going to add Adele Scott into the game. Mm -hmm. I'll invite you to and make you oh, the fantastic. host. Oh, fantastic. You can, you can come in this game if you want. Well, thank you. You're so sweet. You know, I would even call this the day nine effect. Everything was running so smoothly until I hosted the game. I had to make sure that the sound was on. I was a little concerned that I might have to pull another one of those again. So we just need Phoenix to join the game now. Admin is still just checking over his sound to make sure everything is cool. And um, we will be getting this game under the way. Pretty sure we should take the time to actually thank the sponsors, Steel Series, for putting out the huge prize pool for this tournament. It's so big. Yeah, over 200,000 kroner. 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 Over 200,000 crowns. Huge uh, prize pool. We'll give a big Series. shout out to DreamHack. Thank you so much for helping to support the esports industry. We see some of our other players up on the main stage, warming up, battling it out. There's the Muslim waiting patiently. And it looks like Phoenix is setting up his sound at the moment. And once he is done with that, we are going to invite and go. And hey, hello, crowd. How's the crowd doing? We're just getting some shots of you. Everyone's pumped and in the mood. Yes, indeed. There they are. This is the big arena. The off dream of the arena. Sun. This is the dream arena. Where dreams are made and shattered. In an extreme way. <laughs> So for any of you who didn't know, DreamHack is, of course, the largest LAN in the world. There are so many computers, and people brought the most insane setups with Christmas lights and, like, racks with all their electronics, multiple monitor setups, big cases of caffeinated beverages. Uh, we, came in, we came in this morning about 8 o'clock, and there's people walking around in slippers and sleeping bags. I don't even think people sleep here. The entire weekend, they just go sleepless. And now I'm curious. Has anyone in the crowd not slept since the announcement yesterday? Very good. <laughs> no offense to the people who did fall asleep. And it looks like both players are ready, so we're going to go back into game one once again between Adele Scott and Phoenix. Give a cheer for Phoenix if you would like the man from South America to pull the win today. And please give a shout out for Adele Scott. We are finally ready to get this going, and the countdown has begun. Now again, it's Shakura's Plateau. Even though there are four start positions, you will always start cross map. We see Adele Scott spawning in the bottom right as the blue Protoss. In the top left, we have Phoenix as the red Terran. And in the right corner, we have D'Apollo as the disconnected I British disconnected. man. I was really annoyed. I was like, no, I'm not playing in this. But that's okay play. because I'm the captain. I am driving the game, so everything is great. And Diapolo will have to cast from over my right shoulder. We do have Phoenix again spawning here in the top right. Cross positions, it's going to be harder to do aggressive little pushes in the early game because of these narrow ramps. Very easy to control extra expansions. I think there's going to be a lot of comfort as Adele Scott on this map. He's again throwing that pylon down at his choke. Yeah, I don't think the mentality of either players has changed at all. I think they're going to go with their plans that they had before the game. And that's what both players actually do. Is they, when they go into such a large game, they have the plans set out. And they go, okay, I'm going to do this build. And this is what I'm going to stick with. And this is how it's going to roll. And that's what they're going to do. So don't think any of them are going to change anything. We are going to see the barracks being put down pretty soon on 12. And now it looks like Phoenix is just trying to continue to build SCV, not going to do anything, not going to do anything too out of the ordinary. First, he's just throwing down his barracks right at his choke. There is the gateway going down by Adele Scott, and he's sending out a scout probe. Yeah, sending out a scout probe. He is going to scout down the left-hand side, which is in the incorrect way to start with, but he will be going there up here pretty soon and see what's going on. The refinery has been put down here for Phoenix. 
Pretty standard play so far by either players. This is, you know, standard opening. And it looks actually that he is sending the probe straight up to the top left position, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, this is a very common little technique to scout cross map because you really do want to make sure that there's no sort of cheese going on in the center. Unfortunately, he does end up spotting uh, that his opponent is in the bottom left corner, or excuse me, top left corner, so he knows exactly what is up. Yeah, a little bit of probe harass. Uh, SEV does go back. Probe just letting his shield regenerate. That's what people love to do. Uh, Marine is being brought out now also to help defend against this and just to deny any form of scouting and here we go the cybernetics core has been put down will he be going for the second gas though that is kind of interesting that is a key thing we need to look at if he does go for the second gas that's going to kind of entail us that he will be going for like a robo bay or for a stargate but i don't think he is going to go for it we'll have to see very fast orbital command from phoenix looks like he's moving his barracks around that's a little bit confusing and it looks like adele scott will end up escaping with that probe no problem whatsoever in the meantime it looks like adele scott always oh, going for the very early second gas how disappointing i loved it when he only added more and more gateways yeah it's kind of interesting i guess he will be kind of well he obviously has to go for some for some high-tech structure play we're going to see oh the probe does finally go down the marine takes it out and the, the factory has been put down now for Phoenix. That's kind of interesting. Will he be going for the stop or play? Has he got the second refinery? He has got the second refinery down also. The reactor on the barracks. That's interesting to see. I guess we're going to see a ton of Marines brought out. He might even decide to go for the Raven play. The tasteless build, as he says. <laughs> the tasteless build. Yeah, I'm more than happy to give my brother credit for that build because he is the man. Either way, we do see that Phoenix is scouting up to this top right, just making sure no goofiness is occurring up in that corner. Meanwhile, nothing too out of the ordinary going on with Adele Scott. There is the Stalker popping out right now, and a Sentry could very well be going for a one-gate expand that's very much like him. There's the Starport coming out right now for Phoenix. A little bit of Hellion action coming up. I'm super curious to see how Phoenix is going to end up playing off the rest of this game. Yeah, Hellion is going to come out. I guess he's just going to use it to scout. And look at this. It looks like he, uh, Adele Scott's gone for the early expansion. Second gas into expansion is a little bit weird. Um, I mean, why would you go for the second gas if you're just going to go one gate expo? It's kind of interesting. He's got a lot of gas saved up now. He's up to 200. Generally, you end up stockpiling a lot of gas if you want to do some sort of crazy fast Colossus. Or, if, you know, in a more simple sense, you just want to be building a lot of sentries early on. And it makes a lot of sense. Can easily force field for the defense on this map. On, you know, a map like Zelnaga Caverns, it's so wide out and open that a lot of times you would just want the Zealots and the Stalkers. But getting a sentry on Shakuras Plateau, I think, is awesome. And we are upgrading the blue flame for the Hellions, which is kind of interesting. Uh, especially in this match, you don't really see that too much, but it looks like he will be going for a Medivac Hellion drop into wow. the back of the base, and that'll be able to do a lot of damage, especially because he's spending all his resources on the sentries at the front so that he can uh, block any attacks from the front, but he's not going to suspect much from the back. And this is very smart by Phoenix. He's already just blocking with these Hellions at the back. Now, one thing to note, Adele Scott is going to be very confused by his opponent because if he scouts the front, he's going to see a barracks with a reactor, something you almost never, ever get if there is some sort of blue flame Hellion drop coming. So Phoenix is definitely putting on the big deception to his opponent. Yeah, that's the problem. If you don't go for an early Robo Bay, you actually kind of need it to get the Observer out. So you just see, not just for defense against any kind of Banshee play, but just so you can actually see what your opponent's doing. And here we do have the Medivac coming down with a couple of Hellions in. I think he's got two Hellions in. The third one is at the Zelnaga Tower, and he will be wanting to put that at the back. And it looks like he will be dropping this off at the back, but is he prepared for this? This could do so much damage. Phoenix is now moving in. It looks like he's having a little bit of indecision. He could move in. He could attack at any time. Okay, there he is. He's finally deciding that he wants to move in with the, that medevac. The Observer is getting out right now, and it's going to be a little bit too late. Phoenix is already unloaded, and here comes the attack. Oh, here comes the attack, and he's getting a ton of probes. Oh, my oh. God, the probe line is being raped. Oh, oh we got all go down. And this is really bad for Adele Scott, losing a complete mineral line. And Phoenix, oh my god, is coming out to a huge lead, doing so much damage, and escaping with zero losses. And wow, he puts them down, and he can just move around, even go to the front of the base to see. And we're going to see what he does. He might try to go up there just to see what's there. A couple of stalkers are going to be able to push it off. The Observer is in that place, and he will just go back. And great use of his units there. This is the trademark Phoenix aggression, moving into the backside, trying to cook a couple more probes at the last second. But oh, moving into the front as well, and Adele Scott doesn't notice. Oh no, he still doesn't notice. So many probes have died. Oh no, only realizes after most of his probes are already dead and gone. And if he gets one more shot off, no, it looks like Adele Scott is going to escape with just, wow, 25 probes are still alive. He's actually not even that far behind his opponent. Yeah, he lost a lot of probes, but at the same time, he's, he still does have the two 
Nexus, so he can just chrono boost a lot out. But at the same time, we have the command center down and a banshee being made. Is that cloak being researched also? Yeah, His cloak, cloak is being researched as well. More aggression is coming Adele Scott's way from Phoenix. Very, very classic Phoenix play. Would not even be surprised to see him come home and end up doing more dropping action. Looks like he's taking a page out of Nama's book, getting a lot of siege tanks in addition to that pretty typical big barracks for so it looks like phoenix also doing just a little bit of scouting down here might even plant a depot just to check what's up and there's the key scan by phoenix he sees everything that's in his opponent's base uh oh and the thing is the observer is actually in the terran base i think and there are there isn't another observer even in production cloak has finished now he will be moving in with that banshee and you've got to say goodbye to some more pros of Scott because this Banshee is coming in with 48 energy. It's ticking down and we're going to see a lot of more damage being done to his economy line. There's two kills already and there's the Immortal getting produced. Oh no, it gets cancelled. Turn into an Observer. And Adele Scott is just under so much pressure, but in the resource counting station, he is not that far behind his opponent. Ten food at this point in time, but Phoenix is going to continue to increase that lead with this aggressive Banshee harass. And now the food supply, I mean, it's just pulling away 69 to 57, 57 as we can see. The supply, I mean, not the supply, the command center is down for Phoenix, and he is going to be pumping out a lot of SCVs, a lot of mules, and is in really comfortable position. And then siege tanks are in great position as well. If Adele Scott decides to do any form of counterattack, it's just going to be completely nullified by that. So Phoenix now has these two barracks with two tech labs getting stim and combat shield to boost the power of those mariners. There's the photon cannon going down for Adele Scott. Just does not want any more of this harass to dampen his play. Also getting that very important photon cannon and a second robotics facility coming out. That's an interesting play. Might even be going for some big Colossus action. And oh, Phoenix manages to escape with his life. Did, did, um, did Estelle Scott actually go into the base with his observer and see the tech pattern that he was chosen? That's going to be interesting. That's probably the, de the decision why he went for that. Season a couple of extra barracks we made. Probably didn't see the tech labs though, actually. Interesting. So going for a double robo bay. Uh, he hasn't gone for Colossus yet though, so it's going to be, looks like he might be just pumping out Immortals. And Phoenix doing something kind of uncharacteristic of him, hiding an expansion command center at the bottom left. But Phoenix, you know, very much so playing to his strengths, wants to be aggressive, wants to keep his opponent distracted, not just so his economy can get better, but so he can sneak in little tricks like this. Yeah, and that's a great location because I guess Adele Scott, if he did want to look for an expansion of third, he would not really look down there. Really. He'd rather check the 8 o'clock position, uh, the 8 9 o'clock position, and that's... Not where he's gonna well, he's not gonna find anything there, and that expansion will get away freely. And it looks like at the same time, Phoenix is now moving out, and Adele Scott also getting ready to push out too. This could be quite an interesting collision in the middle of the map. Now, this is actually very interesting to see Phoenix now sieging up behind the shrubbery, and now Adele Scott has no ability to see past that. And oh, there's the Banshee harass on the back of the main again. Phoenix trying to do a little bit of damage. The warp in needs to happen fast if he wants to be able to do much of anything. There's the observer noticing those tanks to the other side. And look, this 14 kill Banshee just retreats back to the corner again, and I'm actually starting to think that this robo facility was a misclick. Again, VR is to build a robotics bay. VT is to build a Templar archives. Could have just misclicked a little bit, but either way, Expo is done now for Phoenix. And there's going to be a planetary fortress as well, just making sure it's extra safe in case any units do get down there, that he can be safe with the planetary fortress. Both players just sitting in the middle. Uh, Storm is now being researched, and High Templar are on the way out. But this Banshee in there with more kills coming in to do a little bit more. He's going to try and hit that cannon. Forces a cancel, but has to be careful. Cloaks and does leave. Oh, and it looks like he only has five energy left. Adele Scott is not giving up. He's going to continue to chase it. And oh, no, could have taken it out, but pulled back a little bit too early. And Phoenix just realizing that he has a huge window to continue being aggressive, exploiting every little hole in his opponent's defense. And Phoenix can actually set up camp outside the bottom ramp of his base. Here he is. He is setting down siege mode, and that is, a, that is going to be an extremely annoying line to walk into. The tanks spread out. Oh, doing damage. He can edge closer and closer. And it looks like Adele Scott's actually going to move out. Oh, he's got to be careful. He only has the one immortal there. And these tanks are going to shred everything to pieces. This is such insane pressure by Phoenix. Most players would have already lost by now. But Adele Scott trying to hang on. 
gonna try to pick off this Banshee, and let's see if Phoenix can. I'm noticing in time he does just such exceptional focus. And meanwhile, all these barracks in the main churning out Marines, Marauders, tanks. There's the armory going down. More barracks. This bottom expansion is up and running. And look at how slowly but surely Phoenix is chipping in towards this natural. And this is actually going to force Adele Scott to move out pretty soon. He has to do something. He can't just sit there. And here it is. He is going uh -oh. to move out. Will he be able to do anything? Eunice, there are too many Marines. And it looks like the entire army of Adele Scott is going to go down. Forces a retreat and Phoenix. Ooh. Oh, manages to get one storm out, but the other Templar didn't even get the chance to throw down their storms. And this one Banshee might even be able to take out that essential Templar archive. Just a terrible spot to be in as Adele Scott. He just can't get out there. That's what that's why he should have stayed more in the middle of the map and not allowed Phoenix to get this key location on him. It, it kind of feels a bit like Steps of War when you let them get underneath your natural. And the key structure does go down. Now he's going to work on the Twilight Cancel. Not looking good for our French Protoss player. Phoenix playing at 246 APM, playing so quickly, picking off. Oh, looks like he's going to get the Immortal. The Immortal falls. Phoenix sees that victory is right around the corner. There's four skills being thrown down, but there are so many attacks behind that there's almost nothing Adele Scott can do, and there's the good game. Phoenix, Phoenix coming out to the early lead. Phoenix, what a happy nerd. He must be extremely happy with that win. Always good to get a first win in the game. Uh, you know, coming into the group stages, uh -huh. his first game of the day, takes down a key win, which is going to be so vital for him in the rest of his group. Yeah, definitely. Now, anything can happen because that was the first game of Group E. We will be going into Adele Scott against De Muslim. But I do think that Adele Scott just made a couple of misclicks. The second robotics facility mm. really w looked a little off, but then it was never used really at any point in the game. And I think that Adele Scott's timing was completely thrown off as a result. Those Templar were even like 20, 30 seconds too late. Yeah, I thought maybe he might be trying to put a Colossus Bay down so he can get all the Colossus out, but that didn't come down. And then I thought, okay, well, maybe he wants to build a ton of Immortals. But then as we saw the ending fight, he only had one Immortal mm -hmm. out. So getting the double Robo Bay just didn't seem efficient at all. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, it delayed his high Templar tech and mistakes of playing in front of this crowd, in front of us commentating. It, it might have got to him. And unfortunately, he does lose the first game, which puts him on the back foot in his group. Mm -hmm. Now, the next match is either going to be De Muslim against Adele Scott or De Muslim against Phoenix. And of course, here's the fine folks who made it out to DreamHack here in Sweden. Hello, crowd. Very happy crowds. Seen some awesome games. And now we are going to see the Muslim versus Adele Scott on Zelnaga Cabins. We just need the Muslim mm -hmm. to join into the game. When he joins the games, we can start it. Yeah, now, again, this is going to be a good chance for Adele Scott to sort of calm down, gather his bearings. He probably played against the strongest player in his group first. And as uncomfortable as that is, you've gotten it out of the way. It's not something that's yeah. on your mind. He has two players who, honestly, Adele Scott's going to be a little bit more competitive with heading into this um, second game. The game that we will see after this will be, again, Phoenix against De Muslim. We won't be able to look at Merz's games as they will be played um, after this first set of 90 minutes. So we, once we get De Muslim into the game, we will start. Yeah, Adele Scott, just like you said, needs to clean the slate now. Just forget about that last game. Yes, accept that you lost the Phoenix and now move on to the next game. And he's played to Muslim quite a lot. Obviously, both of the mm -hmm. players living in Europe, playing in all the European tournaments week in, week out. They've mm -hmm. probably played against each other quite a lot of times. Uh, and they probably know each other's style.